Space, time, magic. It's all magic. Giant balls of gas that like float around. Cool. Dark matter expanding the universe until it tears apart. We don't even know what it is. What? Crazy. Tons of things that might like kill us any day. Amazing. I'm excited. Welcome back, man. I'm your ghost, Rachel Fisher. Happy Halloween. I'm a witch. I don't have a hat on. It's not that very. It's not very good. But here we are. Let's talk about space stuff and countdown. But also, I've got stars on it. Space stuff. Let's talk about space stuff. Ten reasons as to why it's super freaking cool and scary at the same time. Let's go. Number ten. In Doctor Who, season one, the doctor takes Rose Tyler to see the destruction of the Earth in five billion years. However, researchers working with NASA think that the world will actually end in a billion years. So four billion years less. This will be due to our ever expanding sun, which will burn off all of the oxygen on our planet, essentially turning into a little fireball before it's consumed. The sun will most likely expand into a red dwarf and literally eat us. Hopefully by then we will have expanded into the universe and inhabited other planets and you know, like firefly it would be awesome if that was real. However, we might destroy ourselves before the sun even has a chance to. So although it is inevitable that the sun will eat us for lunch, what we are doing now might beat it to the punch if we don't do something about it. Number nine, wandering black holes. Black holes that move? No thank you. They can stay right where they are, except for some of them can't. Uh, scientists always suspected that black holes could travel, but they just haven't found one until March 2020 that is. Yay! Researchers at the Center of Astrophysics Harvard Smithsonian finally found a concrete specimen. At the center of a galaxy 230 million light years away is a wandering black hole. It has a mass of 3 million times that of our sun and it is moving at 110,000 miles per hour. Black holes, due to their sheer mass, are usually just too heavy to get any kind of traction. Imagine kicking a bowling ball versus a soccer ball. Bowling ball is the black hole. But scientists think that it may have gotten its start due to a collision, therefore meaning that it could be part of a pair. So where's the other one? Could it be heading straight for us, ready to suck future generations into oblivion? I guess we will never find out, but they will. So good luck guys. Number eight, satellite demolition derby. I feel like we practically just started going to space. It's only been since the 60s, like six decades, like that's insane. Which is why this number blows my mind. In space right now, orbiting our planet are tens of thousands of pieces of space junk, even millions. There are 2,000 active satellites and 3,000 dead ones just like chilling up there. Now that may not sound like too much of a problem, but it really could be. If they started hitting each other, the results would be disastrous. NASA scientist Donald Kessler in the 1970s proposed that if there was too much space junk in orbit, that a chain reaction could occur. As the junk collides with each other, it could cause even more space junk, making Earth's orbit entirely unusable. As you can gather, this would potentially be catastrophic. For companies like SpaceX, who plan on launching 50,000 satellites for global internet coverage, more obstacle avoidance procedures need to be put in place before that happens. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to think about it. It could get really bad. Number seven, aliens. The wonderful late Stephen Hawking proposed that aliens could be dangerous for us to interact with. If you haven't seen Enter the Universe with uh, Stephen Hawking, you should. It's great. I love it. I put it on in the background all the time. He states that not only do intelligent life forms definitely exist just probability wise, he does warn that interacting with them could be really dangerous. Quote, we only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might develop into something we wouldn't want to meet, unquote. First and foremost, if they actually made it here, then they have technology far beyond our understanding yet. That kind of technology would be pretty intimidating and consider how well we humans have dealt with meeting new people in the past. Answer, not good. But who's to say these intelligent aliens might not also be looking to colonize and conquer. We could be to them what the Mayans were to Cortez. If it's the other way around and we end up seeking them out first, who's to say history wouldn't repeat itself? You know? Especially if we're looking for a new place to live. Ugh. Number six, wandering stars. The entire universe is continuing to expand. So that means that everything is constantly moving and could eventually tear apart. But anyways, even our sun is moving. But in relation to us, it isn't moving. However, there are stars that do. They are called wandering stars and there is one in the Milky Way. What makes this one so dangerous is that it could get so close to our sun that it disturbs the Oort cloud. This cloud at the edge of the solar system is composed of comets, which would come hurtling at us if something were to 
hit it. Therefore, not a pleasant thing to think about. As we will discuss later, asteroids will not be kind to Earth. Now imagine thousands all at once. Currently though, we are in a region of less dense interstellar gas. Additionally, the wind and solar magnetic field protect us from interacting with the stellar medium. We will probably move out of this in the next 20,000 to 50,000 years, meaning more dangers will come our way. So basically, our sun protects us until something messes with that. Hence, wandering stars are the worst. I won't be around to see that, hopefully not, anyways, and you won't be either, but somebody will be, and I hope I don't. I hope they don't get to see it either. <laughs> Number five, supernova. What is a supernova? Well, it's essentially when a star of immense size <laughs> explodes. Is this potentially deadly? Absolutely. Our sun is expected to die eventually, but probably not for, you know, a billion years, as previously mentioned. But what will happen when it does? Well, the entire Earth would burn up, essentially, as previously mentioned. It would be 15 times hotter than the surface of the sun, but that's not going to happen for a while yet. However, if a supernova occurred some 30 light years away, this could have detrimental effects on Earth now. Possibly mass extinctions, destruction of the ozone layer, therefore leaving Earth vulnerable to solar rays, which would kill us all. The oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere could also ionize, meaning our atmosphere would turn into a kind of like thick smog. Not a good time and doesn't sound very good. I don't want to be there. Number four, gamma ray bursts. Okay, so we just talked about how scary supernovas are. Well, get ready for gamma rays. It's a death ray from space. They are the most extreme explosions in the universe, like a super, super supernova. It's crazy enough to think that our sun could explode within seconds, not anytime soon, but imagine a star several times the mass of ours collapsing into a black hole. This could turn into a gamma ray burst. Essentially twin beams blast out light so bright that we can see them from Earth, even if they are billions of light years away. So it's like a black hole's in the center and two like lasers. If you think that's crazy, check out this fact. A gamma ray burst can release more energy than the sun will emit in its entire lifetime. What does that mean? It means death for any planet asteroid or spaceman in its way. It's literally like the universe made a lightsaber. Some scientists think that these gamma rays are one of the reasons for the mass extinctions on Earth. Let's hope that's not the case in future. Number three, solar flares. Okay, so even if you're someone who condemns cell phones and says that the internet is killing our brains, yada, 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 much of your life still depends on technology. Many people worry that a killer solar flare could destroy our planet, but that's not actually possible. But what is possible is a complete and total blackout. While the heat of a flare can't make it to Earth, electromagnetic radiation and energetic particles can. They can and have messed with the upper atmosphere and disrupted signal transmissions. But that's tame compared to what else could happen. Should a coronal mass ejection, a CME, hit Earth, it's game over for Insta. Like I will never see you again. Bye bye YouTube. They propel electromagnetic fluctuations that could fry ground level power grids, causing a total worldwide blackout. The largest geomagnetic storm caused by this ever recorded was in 1859. Telegraph networks around the globe failed, operators were shocked, and telegraph paper caught on fire. If we have a storm anything close to that, it could be catastrophic. Number two, an asteroid, of course. Ever seen Deep Impact or Armageddon? I have seen both, each only once because they terrified me so much. All throughout our galaxy, throughout the universe, there are wandering massive rocks drifting through space. Some are as large as whole provinces, even countries. At this moment, there are currently 20,000 asteroids in our galaxy that could pose a threat. Now, I assume that scientists actually have a plan for if one starts barreling for us, but it would be incredibly hard to stop regardless. The White House Office of Science and Technology Policy released a report on June 20th in 2018 that detailed the steps NASA and FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, will take to prevent asteroids from striking Earth and prepare the US for the consequences of the event. Side note, I love how Canada always dies in every disaster movie ever. Like the day after tomorrow, nobody cares about them. We're probably fine though, anyways. That was a side note, side tangent. Anyways, anyways, the US, they are planning ways on deflecting them as well as developing technology that better predicts the probability that ones will hit. So, <laughs> Maybe we won't be able to stop them, but we'll know they're coming. So I guess we can like say goodbye to our loved ones. And last but not least, interstellar clouds. 
Imagine one day looking up into the sky and not seeing any stars, or very few at least. Then another night you look into your telescope and you can no longer see Jupiter. The next morning there is a murky darkness over the sky. You realize that no, this isn't a sci-fi nightmare or an episode of Doctor Who. There's no one to save us. What I'm talking about is an interstellar dust cloud that is capable of destroying the Earth. But don't worry, as terrifying as that intro was, we probably won't be alive to see it. Maybe no one will be, who knows. This event will probably happen in a few millennia, but eventually Earth will come in contact with a cloud a thousand times denser than space. Imagine going from swimming in a pool to swimming in a pile of jello. Yeah. Dust and gas will penetrate our atmosphere and eat away the oxygen. Our planet will then be left vulnerable to solar wind that will come in and tear apart the molecules of life. Something I'm glad I won't not be there to see. Wow! <laughs> I know this is kind of crazy, but wow, how small do you feel? How big do you feel? Existence is insane! If you think so too, like this video and comment on what blows your mind, and don't forget to subscribe. I've been your ghosty witch host, Rachel Fisher. Happy Halloween, and until next time, take care. Mm -hmm.